Welcome back. My name is Jason and I work for Flowcorp. This is the second part in a video tutorial on Digilink remote monitoring software. So let's get back into the content. I'm going to move on from login alarm over to the display settings. This brings up the display settings window. The first option is display mode. And this will remotely configure my Digicom 2000 from within Digilink. I can change this from rate to total or to both. I'm going to leave it on rate. Next I move to the rate settings and the first option is display format. I'm going to change our display from two digits after the decimal point to five digits after the decimal point. When I hit apply we can see this change on the display as well as in Digilink. Now that we've had a chance to discuss our display settings, let's move over to device connection. When we open this window, it looks familiar to us because we renamed our devices here when we first started this video tutorial. At that time, we also discussed the refresh interval. Next, let's move to the device connection area of this window. I mentioned when I was introducing the displays that there's two ways for Digilink to connect to our displays. First is through the COM port. If you're going to use the COM port using RS-485 cable, you'd select this radio button and then select the COM port. The second option for monitoring displays in Digilink is through the local area network. And that's what these TCP IP settings are for. The second radio button is for TCP IP automatic discovery. This is the default, and it's what we've been using in the demo so far. In this scenario, the display asks the network for an IP address, and the network assigns one. This is great for low to medium complexity networks. The third radio button is for TCP IP manual, and you can see when I select this button, the field allows me to type in a new IP address. This IP address would have to be provided by the IT department. This is sometimes required on higher complexity networks. It's also required if you're using a VPN or a virtual private network. Beyond device connection, we're going to move up to scale settings. And as a side note, if you're getting sick of my voice or sick of learning about software configuration, we're getting into the home stretch, so be encouraged. All right, I'm going to click on scale settings. This opens a new window with some more options. The first option is password. Passwords can be important because it essentially renders the device read only. This will protect any configuration settings you've put in, including the scale settings, which can tend to be more complex and definitely something you want to protect. So up at the top here, we're going to set a password by clicking change password. The default password on the device is four zeros. So I'm going to put that in as current password. 0000. zero, zero, zero. Essentially, when the device is set to four zeros, the default password, it treats the device like it doesn't have a password. So we can just freely make configuration changes without having to enter our password. I'm going to put our current password in, and I'm going to make our new password 1234. I'm going to confirm that and hit save. Then I'm going to hit save settings. I've got our password set up now, so let's test it out. As long as we stay on this Configure tab, Digilink remembers that we put our password in. So I'm going to click back into Scale Settings and it opens right up. And I'll also test Display Settings just to show you that it opens right up. I'm going to navigate away from the Configure tab to the Display tab or any other tab. And then when I come back to the Configure tab, I'm going to click on Scale Settings. This time, Digilink asks for the password. I'm going to type it in, 1234, and click OK. And now it opens up the scale settings window. Similarly, I can open the display settings up or any other settings at this point. This password protects not only our access within Digilink, but also access on the device if you were to press the push buttons on the display itself. With an understanding of how assigning a password works, let's go back into scale settings. Beneath the password field, 
we see select input, and currently that field is grayed out. That's because the only option on a Digicom 2000 is 4 milliamps to 20 milliamps. Let's click Cancel. Next, let's click on Influent Flow 4. And if you remember, this is our Digitouch. And if you didn't remember, the picture changes, which helps us remember that we're dealing with the Digitouch now. I click on Scale Settings, and now the Select Input field is not grayed out. This drop-down box gives me a few other options for selecting an input into the display. DigiLink provides me with a simple way to add linearization points to my display. The next field allows me to input the number of linearization points. So I'm going to change that from 2 to 16. Let's say, for example, I have a tank with belled ends, and I referenced a strapping chart to get the values I need. So at 4 milliamps, I want the display to read 0. At 5 milliamps, I want the display to read 100. At 6 milliamps, I want the display to read 250, and so forth. Next, I'll hit Save Settings once I've entered all my linearization points. Now my display is scaled for my tank. The final item I want to review with you in DigiLink is the Alarm Log tab. When I open this tab, I see a list of alarms that were triggered on this device. We didn't set up any alarms for Influent Flow 4, but we did for Tank 3, so I'm going to select that device. Once selected, I see a list of all the alarms that were triggered for Tank 3. And if I grab the scroll bar, I can scroll down and see all the history on this alarm. Now, I only set this device up a couple days ago, but we set this to never delete any alarms, so this would represent all alarms on this device. One example of how the alarm log may be helpful is, let's say I'm the third shift supervisor at a plant. When I start my shift, I could come in and look through the alarm logs for different devices and review what's gone on in the factory. Thanks so much for joining me by watching this video on DigiLink remote monitoring software. DigiLink was created to make a cost-effective solution to remote monitoring, and I hope it can fill that void for you. And beyond remote monitoring, we'd love to help you with any of your flow, level, or display needs, so please feel free to contact us. We work hard to make sure you always get to talk to a live person when you call in. Please check out our website for any additional information, www.flowcorp.com, F-L-O hyphen C-O-R-P dot com. And remember, if you're watching this video as an introduction to our level demo kit, please continue on to the next video, the Tracer Configuration Tool video. Thanks so much.